This show is brought to you by listeners like you. Support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. I'm hungry, spark, but I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail, dog, a set. Never said I was a gangster or a thug, but I'm an animal. Beat up for the taste of the blood. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. Of course, please go check out everything. Subscribe to the show, Indie Mayhem Show, on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and video versions on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook and YouTube page. Drop us a line at goodtimes at wrestlingmayhemshow.com or support the show, patreon.com slash wrestlingmayhemshow for all the Mayhem Show universe support. It goes right there, and we do appreciate those that are supporting the show. At There's too many to name. We name them over on the main Wrestling Mayhem show. Uh, this week, we got something a little bit different. Uh, so uh, Matt Carlins and I have been working on a project for a while now, um, trying to get these interviews lined up uh, about studio wrestling, something that, that we think is really interesting here in Pittsburgh, something that I think is a story that needs to be told. And uh, we had the opportunity to, to sit down with uh, Dan Polinski, um, who uh, some may know as the father of WWE's Corey Graves and uh, CMLL's Sam Adonis, uh, who is also in town uh, for a return match with IWC with uh, Chris LaRusso. And another Chris of the Jericho variety may have showed up for that match that we can't put on video. But anyways, we had to sit down with him. Uh, we were recording for the documentary, and we started talking about a little bit of their involvement in... Um, indie wrestling here in pittsburgh uh we'll get into a little bit of that and uh, a little bit of the, kind of the origin stories of Corey graves and sam elias sam adonis uh so please check out the interview it's something a little bit different i hope you guys enjoy it and please stay tuned um it's going to be a while but we're looking to get that documentary out here as soon as we can and we're getting a lot of inter- great interviews lined up and having a lot of fun with that actually if you're local in pittsburgh look on our facebook page because we're doing these studio wrestling mixers anybody out there that that digs on studio wrestling uh was around uh back in the day has stories was involved somehow we're looking for you guys and we really like to um you know have a conversation with you um so as you grow up what makes you make that leap from being just a fan to i'm going to promote um, well, what happened is, you know, I kind of looked at myself, you know, like some guys put their kids in the little league, that sort of thing, uh, you know, and fathers help out. Well, an interesting story, and I'll tell you what happened was, you know, my boys, I used to do like my grandfather. I would take them to wrestling shows, local if I could or wherever, you know, they became exposed to it, watching it on television. Um, and then one night when we moved back to the Pittsburgh area, uh, my wife went out with the boys. They went out shopping somewhere. Well, they came home and they were so excited because they happened to go into Eastland Mall and there was wrestling in the mall and they were so excited. And they watched this whole wrestling show. Well, here we go to know that was the PWX show back when they first started out. They wrestled right in the middle of the mall. I don't think you had to have tickets or anything. You could just go there and watch. And my boys were so excited about this. So, um, you know, one thing led to the other and I went up there. I started taking my boys up there. And, you know, and I became friends with some of these guys and, you know, Jim Miller mainly, who the owner of PWX, and we became friends. And um, so I ended up actually helping him a little bit, uh, you know, because he said some of the shows they needed somebody like to be a security guy or something. And, and I'm a big guy. And he says, you know, some of these people could get out of hand and, you know, maybe you could help us out tonight and watch this for us. So I did. And uh, the more I'd watch his shows and I'd watch what was going on, I'd think to myself, you know, this is something that I, I think I could do because I, I had a, a very broad wrestling knowledge and, and I thought I could probably do a promotion like this someday, but it never really went seriously through my head. Well, it ends up, I came home one day and my son, Matt, was in high school, went to Gateway High School in Monroeville. He came home and, and my wife said to me that Matt had been acting kind of like, I don't know, down in the dumps, almost depressed, something's wrong with him. So she says, you need to have a talk with your son. So he came home from school one day, and, and I got him in the bedroom, and I sat down in the bed, and I said, what's wrong with you? And he goes, I'm just bored, Dad. And I said, what do you mean you're bored? He goes, I'm just so sick of school, and I, don't, I just don't want to, the kids, I'm just, I don't want to be around this. And he said, I'm just down in the dumps. He goes, I need something new to sink my teeth into that I could be good at. And he goes, I just don't know what it is. And so don't ask me why, but I just thought about the friendship I had with Jim Miller. Well, now Matt is 14 years old, so he's young high school, young junior high or whatever. So I called Jim Miller up. Well, actually, let me back up. I said to Matt, I says, how would you like to go be trained to become a professional wrestler if I could get you trained? And he lit up. Ah, can you do that, Dad? Oh, my gosh. 
That would be the greatest thing. I would love that more than anything. And I says, I'll call Jim Miller and ask him. And I said, but you're very young. He may just tell me no. And he says, I said, but if he does tell me, yeah, I said, maybe we could work something out. So he was so excited. He cheered up. I told my wife what I was going to do. So the next day I called Jim Miller and I told Jim Miller, I says, you know, I got a problem. I says, I don't want my son to be like this. And I says, he's a good kid. And I says, he wants to be a wrestler. And I says, can I get him to come to your training academy, get trained as a wrestler? And he laughed. He says, well, he goes, I know your boy. And he says, nice kid. And he goes, very young. He says, too young to be a wrestler. He says, but I'll tell you what I'll do since I know you and I trust you. He says, I'll let him come to the training academy because probably he'll, he'll buzz out. You know, he won't be able to take it. And he says, but I'll let him in. He goes, $1,500. And he says, you pay the money up front. And he goes, and if he drops out at any point, he goes, hey, I can't give you the money back. I'm like, okay. And he says, you can pay me $500 increments if you don't want to pay me the whole month. He says, okay. So I go up to, he's come up to the arena tomorrow night, up to the PWX. My kid comes home. First thing out of his mouth, Dad, did you call Jim Miller? Yeah, I did. What did he say? You're good to go. We got to go up there in the evening tomorrow. Oh, he was happy. So we get in the car. We drive up to Eastland Shopping Center and go inside. And, you know, the wrestlers are there and they meet him and all this and that. Get him all signed up to go. And he got to meet everybody. He was excited. So we left that night and he had to be there the next night for training. It was cold out. I can remember it being almost like this. Dropped him off at training. I says, have fun. You know, I'll be back in a couple hours. So I go back to pick him up after a couple hours. He gets in the car. He's all excited. I says, so what'd you do all night? He says, I ran laps around the complete parking lot at Eastland Shopping Center, which, you know, that was a big place. And I says, and that's all you did? He goes, yep. He goes, as soon as I got there, they told me to go back outside and run laps all night. And he goes, I ran laps. And he says, I says, well, did you like that? He goes, well, that's what you got to do, Dad. I says, Okay. So that was all he did the next night, ran laps. So I'm like thinking, man, I mean, you know, how long is this kid going to before he comes back to me and say, Dad, this isn't for me. So the third night, I believe it was, I picked him up and he gets in the car and he, and he takes a jacket and he goes, Dad, he goes, look at this, takes his jacket off and I look at his back and there are ring welts all across his back. I says, what the heck happened to you? He goes, they taught me how to run the ropes tonight. It's like, oh my gosh, the kid was in seventh heaven. Well, I'll tell you, for I want to say two, three years, he never missed practice. He went three days a week to Eastland, never missed practice until after probably about six months of this, I happened to be up there to pick him up one night. And again, he's a young kid. And Jim Miller says to me, he goes, hey, he goes, come in and see what your kid can do. I said, no, that's okay. I don't want to bother. He goes, no. He goes, come on in. I go in and, and Matt was just getting in the ring. It was his turn in the ring. And I was amazed at the flips and the things he was doing. And Miller says, he's going to be good if he sticks to this. And I said, well, he loves it. I can tell you right now, he'll never quit this because he loves it that much. So he did this nonstop until he was 17, three years, 17 years old. He got a chance to wrestle at the University of, uh, I'm sorry, Penn State University in, uh, in uh, down near Wheeling, West Virginia, one of those towns at one of the universities like a... Uh, yeah, Fairmont, that, Fairmont, yeah. Fairmont, West Virginia it was. And we all packed up and went down there. And he wrestled another guy from PWX who was 18. My son was only 17, but in West Virginia, he could he could work. So the two of them went down together. And this promoter let those two wrestle each other. And they knew each other really well. They were friends. Well, they put on an unbelievable show. And somehow or another, and I don't remember all the details, they put their belt on my son that night, his first match. And it was the most unbelievable thing. It was a, a decent-sized crowd. It was a little indie show. And my family, you know, we sat there. And the minute we saw him come through the curtain, there was this guy from West Virginia in his face, jawing at him and pointing at him. And they're, like, arguing before my son even got out on the runway. And, uh, and my wife's thinking, oh, my gosh, somebody's going to hit him. There's going to be a fight here right now. And, uh, and he did great. And the rest is history. You know, he just kept on going and going to more promotions and things. So me not to be long-winded about this, I at one point decided, you know what, I can do my own, and I could, you know, make it, in my opinion, a little bit better. So um, I did FNW. And then uh, T. Ranchula, a local big favorite around Pittsburgh, he became my partner. And we did shows primarily up in the Butler County area the days in. And I don't know if you all had ever gone up there for any of them, but we had great shows, nice hot crowds. And we were getting usually in the neighborhood of 300 people a show, three to 400 people a show. 
And I brought in some names like uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan. I had come in, uh, you know, numerous ones. I had Tommy Rich from back in the days, you know. Um, and we just had a great time of it. And then what happened was, you know, the boys were getting called to go to WWE. My oldest son, Sam, had the first WWE contract. And then um, after that, Matt got his. Well, then you know, once they were on there, as we go back to the analogy of the Little League coach, I felt as though, you know what, I did my thing. I ran shows. My boys are doing well. It's time for me to just say, okay, I'm done with this and, you know, and move on. And uh, that's how the beginning and the end of FNW and how my boys fit into it from day one till, you know, till we ended up quit running shows. I got to follow up with, when you told your wife that I got the perfect thing to cheer up, Matt, we're going to set up a wrestling school. What did she say? My wife loves wrestling. My wife didn't really pay that much attention. She knew about Bruno, but she really didn't pay much attention. But when she saw the reaction that my boys had to wrestling, like any loving mother, she loved it. And it was like when she found out that Miller was going to do that, she was so appreciative because like any mother, nobody wants to see their kid get into a funk. And she felt as though I needed to do something because I'm the father to try to help this along. And so she followed him from day one. My wife was like my partner in FNW. She, she really carried her part of the weight as far as like, you know, the money, the tickets. And she was at every show. Um, she knew what we did. She knew how everything worked. And, uh, and she loved the whole thing. Got to be so much good friends with so many of the wrestlers. Because we even had some other wrestlers, you know, that would come to our shows. And then they got, became WWE wrestlers after that. She got to know all these guys, you know. And, and she was so supportive of those boys. And to this day, she's their biggest fan. She'll go to shows. She'll watch them on TV. Uh, she just loves it. And so she was very happy that Jim Miller... And I, and I owe a lot to Jim. You know, Jim's a, you know, he was my competitor when I was running shows. But there was a mutual respect, which I didn't go down into his area. He never came up into my area. I used some of his wrestlers once in a while if I needed an extra guy or whatever. Uh, we always, and to this day, have a, a friendly rapport. Uh, Norm Connor, same thing. Norm and I, we ran. I started, you know, helping Norm. And, uh, and I, again, went my own way. Um, after that, but you know, to this day, you know, we never stepped on each other's toes. You know, he did his thing, I did my thing, and that's the way I preferred it. You know, I didn't want to burn bridges because now here's my son here tonight to do an IWC show, and they brought him in from Mexico City. You know, so in this in this arena, you know, it's never good to burn your bridges or you know work for this guy today and, and and trash talk the other guy or whatever because you never know when an opportunity might come around and I felt that for my boys so when I did shows you know I wasn't going to do that but again my wife loves wrestling and is 100% supportive and was supportive of my boys from the day they began now Sam so you know when I had FNW I had a school um, over in Plum Borough I had a nice you know area that we rented we had a ring set up um, and my son, Matt, trained my son, Sam. So when you see Sam in the ring, you know, he, his original training, that was from Matt. And Matt's, Matt's a, good, uh, a good worker in the ring. And he trained Sam. But Sam's personality, Sam's personality is a, he's a, he's a big personality. Um, he's way more flamboyant than, you know, what Matt was. It's, it's amazing seeing the difference of the two. But as far as wrestling skills and knowing the wrestling business and all that, Matt was the one that trained Sam. And Sam gives Matt 100% credit. They're very close, his brothers, very close. Um, you know, they, they, they would do anything for each other, you know. And I'm fortunate as a father to have two sons that have made it, you know, to the big time. And, uh, you know, it amazes me. I watch Sam, you know, from Mexico City, maybe on a Friday night on my television, watch his shows, you know, and though he's in another country wrestling, you know, and, and then Sam, or Matt, rather, seeing him every Monday night, you know, on the screen, it's like, it's almost kind of surreal thinking of where we started from him running laps around Eastland Shopping Center. It's kind of, kind of weird. Yeah. Do you think of your sons as part of going all the way back? Do you think of them as part of Studio Wrestling's legacy in a way that that, that that's I, I, I do. I do. I, I give all the credit to Studio Wrestling because that's what kind of brought me into it. The first thing I ever did that ever knew anything about wrestling was Studio Wrestling. I was watching Studio Wrestling before I ever went to the Palisades. 
That's what made me go to the Palisades with my grandfather. But I had been watching it at his house. The only reason I was too young to go, that's why I didn't go. And finally that one night he said, the heck with it. You know, I made a fuss and he took me with him. But it was studio wrestling and it's interesting to this day, you know, especially Sam. Uh, you know, we'll talk for hours and, and these, these boys, they know all about studio wrestling. You know, I've told them all the stories. They know where this all comes from, where it all begins. And when somebody asks them, how did you get started in professional wrestling? 100% of the time, it's, well, my dad used to go and used to talk to us about studio wrestling. And when he used to go and it was interesting and that's how it all evolved. So I give 100% of that. Everything I've ever done was to studio wrestling and because I didn't know anything but studio wrestling. That, that opened the door and made my, my mind start looking and buying those wrestling review magazines. And that made me become a student of it at a really young age. So that was our interview. Thank you so much for uh, uh, dancing down with us. And uh, great great to see him there and see him at the IWC show later that night. Uh, if there's anybody you think we should talk to, hit us up at goodtimesatwrestlingmayhemshow.com. Any indie wrestling you think we should be checking out, anything of the sort, please let us know at Mayhem Show on Twitter as well. And like I said, please, if you're interested, go check out the events on Wrestling Mayhem Show and Sorgatron Media for the studio wrestling mixers. We'd like to get some people out there. Just chat studio wrestling with us. If there's anything, you have any memorabilia, anything like that, or just just chat. It's just just chat, and we love hearing the stories as well uh, up here in uh, the Pittsburgh area. Thank you so much. And until next time, support indie wrestling. Oh. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.